body supreme decisions here and yes tonight i'm actually just trying to get over my workout because i had a little little oomph, oomph going on anyway today i want to talk to you about something and it deals with the context of a coerced confession and it deals with the criminal defense strategy or standard that lays harmless error upon the prosecutor or which allots for harmless error. Well, today's case is Arizona v. Fulminati. Yeah, I, pro uh, yeah, I probably butchered that anyway. 499 U.S. 279 and it's a 1991 case. Now, what I want you to understand, the context of the case is a little bit different from the application because this isn't a case that sets precedence in any form, but it is one of those that goes into dealing with the violation of a coerced confession. And generally, just like I did in, in a couple videos previous, I spoke about the context of police and dealing with underage children. Now, I'm going to get deeper into a lot of this stuff, especially when I talk about weaponizing your defense in the next series. And like I said, we're going to be doing things and talking about things in a more elaborate way. And those that are part of the masterclass are going to get more in depth than everyone else. So if you're not a part of the masterclass, April is the time to do it. And that's not an April Fool's. But if you're not a part of the master class, then you are a complete fool. Joking, not really, but it is what it is. Well, today we're gonna to deal with the two part that was set up in Arizona v. Full, Full Minate. It's the first part holding that harmless error rule is applicable to the admissibility of an involuntary confession. Now, this is one of the reasons why I tell people constantly, remain silent because all of the context and liability goes on the questioner. Why? Because those people have a process and a procedure they must follow. Now, when you're volunteering you know, information or when you're listening to the lies which you know they can tell you and then saying things or just agreeing with them. These things that are brought up, while they can be later at least challenged for suppression, they're generally not won once you open your mouth because everything you say will be held against you in some form. Now, if you have nothing to say, they have to prove everything that they're saying against you. And the second part is the violations of this rule are grounds for granting the defendant a new trial. These are things that also come up for appeal. Why? Because when I spoke about in the video for appeal, I spoke about legal error. These are one of the grounds for a new trial or appeal. Even liability in federal court. Why? Because they're procedures. These aren't things that I make up. I'm literally reading to you these things that are already written. Now, it's understanding how they apply. Now, this isn't a case that you would necessarily use when you're going to court, but this is a guideline case which allows you to continue moving forward and applying the other things that go along with this case. So that's what I have for you today. It's understanding what allows you for the legal error for a new trial under Arizona v. Fulminante 499 U.S. 279 1991. The harmless error rule is applicable to the admissibility of involuntary confessions. Violations of the rule are grounds for granting the defendant a new trial. So, 
keep supporting the podcast, grab your t-shirts, and also sign up for the masterclass. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep growing. And as you know, we're in the studio. So let's go. Supreme, out. Out.